Bold and Blonde. Welcome to the Mindset Evolution Podcast. The podcast to get tools for a powerful mind you can use immediately every day. Get tips, tricks, skills and inspiration to create what you desire and achieve a content life wherever you are. And here are your hosts, Kathy Tate and Daisy Pub. And hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Bold and Blonde Mindset Evolution, the podcast that gives you tools for a powerful mind. And we are deep into Series 7 and coming today is another exciting episode. And I don't know why I changed the intro, but <laughs> <laughs> you're free to do so. Here we are. I'm Kathy Tate, your host from Australia. With me as always is Daisy Papp, your host from America. Hi, Daisy. <laughs> Hi, my dear friend down under. So good to see you like always. I'm very filled with joy every single time I see you, I hear you and we can co-create or we can discuss matters and it is exciting to learn what you have up your sleeves. Yeah, I've got a funny one today, actually. It's a cliche and I just thought we'd wing it and break it down. As you guys know, who've been listening to us for a while I don't tell Daisy what we're going to record. We don't pre-discuss it. We don't plan it. We don't research it. I get inspired and that is what happens. So today we're going to talk about an old cliche from my culture, square block, round hole. Oh, okay. Square block, round hole. Okay. The first association coming to my mind is that children toy where you have something round, a triangle and something square, and then children are learning how to fit the right shape into the right opening. Yes, exactly. And in fact, I had one as a child, it was like a globe and it had all different shapes on the sides. And it was quite a popular toy for a couple of decades. So anybody probably older than 40 may have had one of these <laughs> and you did have to put the shapes into the right hole. And this is where that saying comes from. And even an older version of the toy where you had a hammer and there was just sort of a wood with three different shapes and then you had the three different blocks that fit and the old saying comes from that toy but means that often as people we try and fit the wrong shape into the wrong hole in our lives in what we're doing in a given situation. And that's where I wanted to go in this episode. I'm the first to pull my hand up. Yes, I admit I tried unsuccessfully. <laughs> I tried unsuccessfully and I think maybe it's a good idea that we go straight to the solution and then we can just dissect it. Trying someone to be someone they cannot be is unfair to everyone involved, period. And that is not only applying to people, but also to life situations. Let's say I'm on a yacht in the middle of the ocean And I want to take off because I want to fly to Rome. It's maybe not the right time with the right vessel and the right goal. So I think it is a good idea to have a look at the shapes. Because oftentimes when we would consider any life situation as a shape, when we think more visually, the majority of humans are very visual. Not everyone, but the majority. And I'm speaking to those right here, right now. We can speak about the others later. When we have a problem or we have a challenge, oftentimes it appears so abstract that therefore we do not really see a solution because it is too abstract. Now, when we say, okay, Kathy, you have the challenge, you have an expo coming up, or Daisy, you have a speaking gig coming up, or you have a seminar coming up, and let's say I feel challenging or you feel challenging about what's ahead of us. If we say, okay, What shape would it have if it had a shape? And let's say you say, ah, well, it looks like a square. Okay, what do you need to do to make it work for you now that you discovered it's a square? You will reach very different areas of your brain because you're out of the abstract. I understand that the image of a challenge being square 
or triangle or round, depending on who assigns a shape to their challenge, is still abstract, but it's something that we most often know. Most people know what a square is. Most people know what a round circle or the shape of something round is. So you're saying that the familiarity of the shape triggers something in our brain and it starts finding solutions in areas we wouldn't have thought of otherwise. I think that's very well put. I'm not sure if it triggers though technically. What I think is that the familiarity that you mentioned is the key. Because when I feel familiar with something, I most likely have an experience and I also have experience how I solved it in the past. Okay, so rather it would open a pathway. Well, we get access to some creative parts and pieces in our brains that allow us to approach a challenge in a very different angle. Mm, I like it. I remember a day many, many, many years ago, I had an office in Miami Beach and I had a teenager who chose me. He wanted to be a client of mine and it was a very interesting situation. A father calls me and he says, yes, do you work with teenagers? I said, yes, but what does your son think about that? Well, he chose you. So the kid comes in, we made an appointment. The kid comes in and he says, I just want to make sure. So everything we do here and speak is confidential, right, ma'am? And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> Unless, of course, when there's responsibility and liability, if he wanted to harm himself or do something illegal or wanted to harm someone else, that's a different story. And what I did, I had a plate with pebbles and they had different shapes, different colors. They were from different places from around the world. And he shared with me a problem of his. And I asked him, okay, choose the stone that represents the problem. And then he chose a stone and he put it somewhere on the desk. And I asked him, okay, which shape has the solution? He says, there's no solution. I said, but if it had a solution, I'm circumventing the barrier or the blockage. And then he chose something. Well, the solution, when it is already found, when the solution is already available, this is how it would look like. So I had him place these in proximity on the desk and I asked him, okay, what other utensils are needed or what skills are needed that you can get to the solution? So he picked another few of these stones and he arranged some abstract, we cannot even say art, but it looked very artistic because you have a shape that is random, but to him it made sense because every stone was linked to something in his mind. So he was actually putting on a map, which was a white desk. He put the stones there and he was able to see it. That's how he solved it. I love that. Yeah. So now there's a different story, of course, when we try to fit the triangle in the hole of the round shape. Square. Or the square. Yes. Either one. <laughs> so I think when we try something once and it doesn't work, let's give it another try. I think that's a good idea. And then totally slow down, step one step back and see it from a different angle, different perspective, maybe different distance. And there's another, to me, dear picture coming to mind, the butterfly that's trapped in your house and it's there at the window and it flies a little bit, let's say around in the room, and then it tries to bang itself against through the window because it doesn't understand that there's glass, although it appears to be open. And then it's sitting there on the window and next to it, like 10 centimeters or let's say four inches next to it, there's a window that's open. It doesn't see it. And it may dry out and die because it's trying to get it his way or her way or its way. So it very much also can bring some wisdom when we think about my way or the highway. It doesn't make sense to me. Yes, I agree. And I think you'd call that a matter of perspective, which actually ties back to the square block. Because if you think about geometry and a square as a cube in 3D and the other shapes as well, when you step back and look at those shapes from a different perspective, they can actually look quite different. Mm. Take the circle, for instance. In 3D, it's actually a cylinder. Mm. So from above, it's just a round shape. But if you stood at the side of it and looked from a different perspective, you see a whole different shape entirely. 
And that can, I think, translate into when we're looking for solutions, sometimes we just need to step to the side or step back, as the saying goes, and see if that fresh perspective prompts your creativity and other ideas or solutions will come flowing. So I think that's a great way of looking at the square block round hole problem too because what's to say we couldn't change the shape of the square? Mm. Why does the square need to remain a square? Let's think of that. Well, when it comes to humans, I think it's much better and healthier to leave people be because also we want to be left to be. Oh, but what if I am the square, Daisy? Yes. And the round hole is something that I really want. What if the round hole is one of my big personal goals and I'm a square? Let's actually use it in my life. Something new I've been doing for the last 13 weeks is going to the gym four times a week in the morning with my son. And I am now hooked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta say, I love it. Now, before he offered to do that with me, I would definitely consider exercise and me not great buddies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like that round hole was a better physical version of myself that I have always wanted to be healthier, to be more in shape to have more muscle tone, to feel stronger. That was my round hole. That is my round hole. Mm. And until I committed to some sort of regular exercise to get to that point, I was a square. And so I made a decision to change from being a square and into a different shape so I could fit my round hole. So that's what I'm talking about, where we have a look at ourselves and go, is this the way I want to be? And how am I going to get into my round hole if I stay this way? Okay, very good example. I think the key here is that it is you choosing to change your shape. Absolutely. Period. Yes. It's not somebody telling you must. You have to, you're supposed to, it's better for you. No, it is your own spark that then made you go and stick with it. Now, that is why I, and we produced a episode on that, motivation. Motivation is manipulation. So when you do it with your free will, because you considered, you evaluated, it feels good for you, you want to do that, then go for it and it's much more lasting. Now, I see more arguments occurring around the world because somebody wants to reshape other squares and cubes into rounds and triangles. And then we're back to the beginning of the episode, wanting someone to be who they cannot be is unfair to everyone involved. So now what I think is a very good idea to stop banging that hammer when you tried already so long and it doesn't fit in there, then maybe Take a different approach, going back to your abstract cube, wanting to fit in that round shape hole, then maybe seek for a bigger hole. You see how interesting when we speak about something abstract and consider it from different angles, we end up with very different ideas. Yes. I know of people who try to use hammers or even abuse hammers, not physically, mentally, verbally, emotionally and really try to fix people, although it's none of their business, number one. Secondly, it's zero of their responsibility. And it is disappointing for everyone involved. Please, people, stop hammering around. When you already know it didn't work this way, stop doing it. Find another hobby, find another project. But trying to fix and reshape and change other people Just think of yourself when you want to change, like you did with your exercise program, you wanted it. You felt inspired. Maybe you thought about it intellectually, rationally. It makes sense for you. And so you stick with it. When somebody external would have told you you have to, your pushback would have been switched on. Oh, now let me jump in there because... Please. 
that is almost how I've felt my whole life and that somebody telling me was society and me being the rebel I am went, you can't tell me what to do. (laughs) And so that was one of my ways of rebelling, even though, of course, it was against what was actually probably better for me. Mm. In a crazy way, it was what I was doing at the time. And so that's a very common response, I think, when we're told we need to do something or instructed or rules decree, there's often a part of us that wants to rebel against that you have to because we've got free will. We want to choose for ourselves. And so it should be that we have that freedom in all areas of our lives, right? I agree with you. Nevertheless, what I'm observing in sessions and in my life as an observer, many people stick to things and they are just stubbornly holding on to it because I said so, or this is what it's supposed to be, because this is what society says. This is how the role models are. Absolutely. There's a lot of round holes out there. Or squares or triangles. I think it is a good idea to understand a good fit and incompatibility. And that is something we can only recognize. I know of people who hold on to things for 20, 30 years, sometimes even 40 years. And then life comes along and teaches a lesson that is not so pleasant sometimes. And then they realize, oh my goodness, what did I do all my life? I try to fix others. I try to change others instead of me changing. And now I can circle back to our episode, The Mirror. I can circle back to the episode, You Made Your Bed. I can circle back to a bunch of episodes here. And it goes back to taking full responsibility for us being us and bettering ourselves. And when I take full responsibility for myself and I take full responsibility to better myself, And you do the same. And we then meet. This is heaven on earth. And I'm not speaking in a religious way. Now, there are more and more people who are very committed to self-develop. I see it around the globe. There are more men now coming forth who discover that many things are inherited. It's not even theirs. Habits, beliefs, cultural empowering methods or weakening suppressing, so forth. So it's very interesting. It's exciting to observe. And yes, look at the shapes first and look what's possible. And if you first think it's not possible, rethink and open up your creativity Pandora box. The more we are afraid that we cannot achieve it, the harder we try in ways that won't work. I give you an example. The lady who just lost her dog. And she now wants to find another dog that it must look cute and it cannot be larger than this particular size. And it must be this and it must be that. And she wants the dog now because she's in so much pain and she wants to have a dog now and so forth. It is really getting challenging for her because she is more in panic than in joy. Now, when I'm in panic, I will see different things and see things differently than when I am in joy. All right, so I want to circle back to what you said at the beginning Mm. where trying to be someone they cannot be is unfair to everyone involved. I'd like to rephrase that, how I meant it. Maybe that's how I said it. How I mean it is trying someone else to be someone they cannot be is unfair to everyone involved. Oh, trying to get someone else yeah. To be something they cannot be. Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah. I may have not written it down properly at the beginning. I was writing very fast to keep up that's with fine. what you were saying. Yeah. No, I think that's an important point that we should talk about because it's probably a very common trait. And, you know, maybe there's even circumstances where they don't know they're doing that. Mm. One, they haven't self-examined enough to realize. Two, it could just be a learned trait. You know, if your parents did that, you would learn to do that. I've noticed, I have to say, nothing to do with this particular topic, but at 50 and my mum is 75, 
And I've noticed some of the traits she has. I learned that behavior and I'm seeing it now as an older person with that generational wisdom, I suppose, where you look back on your life and you realize some of the things you did and you're trying to figure out why. And then you go, oh, well, yes, (laughs) I can see that because I'm Mm. close to my mom now. So it's an interesting point that we may not always realize that is what we are doing. And so how do people bring a self-awareness to that? Well, I think it is a good idea to seek the areas in your life where there's conflict over and over, because that is like a thermostat. It shows you, aha, there it's a little hotter, there's a little cooler. And when there are areas where there are recurring arguments showing up or where there are frequent tensions, I'd have a look there first and then reevaluate. Is it me trying to make the impossible happen? Is it me trying to force someone, maybe indirectly, lovingly, caringly, I'd only want the best for you, Am I doing that? And then once you realize and notice and become self-aware, meaning that you notice what you're doing while you do, when you do it while you're doing what you're doing, then is when we can have that light bulb switch on and then we can see what we're doing. And now I go back to the video that we shared in one of the recent episodes with the little kid that went to school and it was late for obvious reasons, only later. And the teacher wanted to force the child to be on time, but it was practically, factually impossible. So people, please put yourself sometimes more often in other people's shoes. We don't know what other people are going through. We don't know what they went through. And even if we know what they went through or what they're going through, they evaluated very differently most of the time than we would. So we are already in an unfair position, even when we judged them. So the key here is really to increase human values, become aware of human values, foster them more often, and let others do the same. And one more picture here. You have a cat. Why don't you ask your cat and scream at your cat? It should bark. Why don't you do that, Kathy? Because the cat can't bark. Physically impossible. There you go. So accept others for who they are, where they are at in their own self-development, at the stage where they are at right now in life. When we start becoming the inspirers and the lighthouse so they can navigate, now then we can achieve things smoothly, peacefully, empowering others. And then it's not because I want you to be a manager. No, maybe I can inspire you that you want to be a manager. And if I cannot inspire you that you want to be a manager, then why would I want to force you to be a manager in the first place? This is just one example, but it happens in relationships from parent to child from grandparent to young adult grandchildren. It happens between spouses. It happens in communities. It happens in neighborhoods. It happens in circles of friends. Let's stop that. It's insanity. That is what I refer to, that we're trying to really hammer that square shape through the round hole. Why would we do that? So it is so easy when we look back at the toy that you brought up. And I think it's a brilliant episode topic. Thank you for another great idea that it is so logical that we now would not try to put the square in the hole. How long would you try doing it? Most likely you wouldn't. So it is so obvious when it's in the shape of a toy. And how often do we do it in real life? Let's stop it. What we have the power to do, we also have the power not to do simple as that. Yeah, 100%. And I'd like to leave the audience with the thought that it is always best to inspire others, not try and change them. (laughs) That's it from us today. I think that's been a fun discussion around a good old cliche of mine. So thank you to our audience for your time and listening in and for sharing our episodes We are at 94 countries and growing. My goal is 100 for 2023. So Mm. help us 
I'm sure that everybody out there knows somebody they could share this episode with. So please do that for us. And you can always contact us at boldandblonde.live. You can share your feedback, your thoughts, how you found an episode, if it helped you in your life, a topic idea you might want us to discuss. And while you're there, please support us. There's a support us link at the top of the page. That's boldandblonde.live. That's it from us this week. We'll be back soon with another awesome episode. We are Bold and Blonde. Mindset Evolution. Talk to you next time. Thank you for listening in to the Bold and Blonde Mindset Evolution podcast. Please share our podcast with your family and friends. Together, we make this world a better place. For you, for us, for future generations. Visit us at baldandblonde.live to get freebies, gift feedback, and even support us with as little as $1. Talk to you soon.